So I'm the youngest of four. And on a cold night in Buffalo, which there were many, sure. you know, we would talk my dad into taking us to the bowling alley and show up only to find out it was league night and yeah. there was no lanes. <laughs> and I was just a little guy, you know, whatever, eight, nine yeah. years old. And I remember thinking like, that's crazy. There's no way, you know, I, one day I'm going to own my own center and I'll bowl whenever <laughs> I want to. Awesome. So thanks so much for coming on today, Ed. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. You know, we met at the uh, summit in Savannah and mm -hmm. I've been looking forward to this one. So thanks for coming on for the people who have not had the pleasure of meeting you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the company you're working with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And thanks to you too. You know, this is very cool what you're doing for the industry and I'm real happy to be a part of it. My name is Ed Connolly and uh, I am, I am the owner of a company called Kingpins Worldwide. And I also am in sales for Funk Bowling, and I have been doing both those for several years now. A little bit about, I guess, about me. I, I found my way into bowling, you know, I guess like a lot of people, I, I grew up in an area that had a lot of bowling alleys, uh, oh, yeah. Buffalo, New York, Western New York yeah. area, a little bit of time in Northwest Pennsylvania. So, you know, like those areas where it's so cold for so long, there was yeah. bowling alleys everywhere. And oh, I yeah. have distinct memories of, you know, a lot of them were like the neighborhood kind of bar, you know, you'd call them maybe a dive right. bar these days or something, you know, <laughs> yeah. just a small amount of lanes. Mm -hmm. uh, really good pizza, that kind of thing. I, as I was thinking about this conversation, a memory came back to me. And uh, so I'm the youngest of four. And on a cold night in Buffalo, which there were many, sure. you know, we would talk my dad into taking us to the bowling alley and show up only to find out it was league night and yeah. there was no lanes. <laughs> and I was just a little guy, you know, whatever, eight, nine yeah. years old. And I remember thinking like, that's crazy. There's no way, you know, I, one day I'm going to own mm -hmm. my own center and I'll bowl whenever <laughs> I want. But yeah, so never was a very, and still am not a particularly accomplished bowler. I'm certainly mm -hmm. no threat on the lanes, <laughs> but uh, you know, I guess, you know, bowling kind of transcends a lot of that, you know, right. it's, so I was definitely really into the, into the vibe of it. And the way that I, uh, I guess found my way into it was I was living in a small town in Georgia, a college town that had one bowling center, but they didn't offer, you know, any kind of, they didn't have any bar or anything there. And, uh, you know, I, I would, I would remember you know, driving, driving down the road. It was on, on a Sunday morning and, and seeing, you know, a parking lot full, you know, empty beer cans and stuff like yeah. that. So <laughs> it was sort of like, it wasn't that drinking wasn't necessarily going on. It just wasn't going on inside the building and, or however that worked. And so an opportunity rose for me and I tried to recreate one of those little Western New York, upper Midwest kind of little boutique yeah. bowling centers. And okay. I like it. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, I, you know, the guys who came in to build it, I, I, I learned it, you know, by doing, I, you know, I knew a lot about food and beverage and customer service and things like that. But as far as the bowling piece, you know, I, I learned it on the job, sure. um, but I, I remember the crew that came down and was putting it in. They kept saying things to me like, man, this, they just don't do them like this anymore. They just don't do them like this anymore. It was certainly old school, yeah. which brought positives and negatives, you know, <laughs> but, sure. uh, but uh, we had a, we had a pretty cool experience in that um, after being open for about three months, a friend of mine was getting married. He had his reception there. And uh, his employers, who happened to be REM, got together the four original members and did a okay. show in the in the in the bowling alley. So oh, wow. uh, seven songs. It's out there on YouTube. At least some of it is. That's but sweet. that took our little bowling center and just you know it kind of really yeah it really blew up. <laughs> did you do a lot of music after that? Yeah, that was yeah. something that we certainly catered to. I mean, yeah. it was in Athens, Georgia, which is okay. You know, yeah. such a great college town. So many right. amazing. There's so many great bands that you've heard of, and so many great bands that you haven't heard of. You know, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah, I was. Music became a part of what we did. We had we we had regular you know touring bands. We found a niche for us in that the rock clubs and your traditional venues most of them if not all of them were not open on sunday nights because of the way the alcohol laws were at the time mm -hmm. so a touring band we could get some good ones on, right. on sunday nights and that's what we kind of found our niche there i always thought the days of the piano lounge were kind of kind of cool and uh, i had a, a a friend of mine start to do a weekly piano show there he went on to join the drive-by truckers and not too long after that mm -hmm. but that was a really fun thing that we did we just tried a lot of 
kind of out of the box thinking i guess you know yeah and so would the band play to like the whole all of the lanes or was there a separate room for it Cause... yeah there was a separate yeah there was a separate room that we the way it was in a shopping center mm-hmm. so i originally got two of the pieces open it up put in the lanes and then it was so popular i i got the space next to us and added two more lanes yeah. and made that you know sort of room for that yeah. okay and, uh, it just yeah, as a tie part. In. sorry what's that so that's the tricky part is like some people are coming to to bowl and they're not necessarily there for the music and you know you got to work that out a lot of people will do it with like separate room or outside or something like that seems to be the way to go yeah a lot of people do that and then you know there's 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 and then there's all kinds of opportunities for sort of the instagram experience i guess you know to incorporate mm-hmm. it more into the rest of your business all kinds of ways but yeah we had a room that that we did those shows in and as a as a, as a small tie-in to one of your past uh guest Mr. Bart Berger uh mm-hmm. I originally called that room the 11th frame lounge which was a mm-hmm. nod to the Brunswick center that he used to operate yeah in the same town so yeah. that's a great name a little close the loop there on that very one. cool so then I guess you <laughs> at some point exited that center yeah I you know I found out about four years into it I was going to be a, a first-time father and uh, you know that that changed my outlook on, on a lot of things you know mm-hmm. and uh, you know and it was not too long after 2008 when a lot of people were having some challenges and uh, you know the timing seemed right so yeah I actually moved out of the area I moved out of Georgia mm-hmm. to be closer to my wife's family at the time so we moved a ways away and at that point you know I had uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people can probably relate to the idea when you're when you're running your own business and and you're you're kind of doing the preneur <clears throat> kind of thing. You know, you're there are times you long for the direct deposit paycheck every two sure. weeks. You know, yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah. And I I decided to exit the industry for a little while and and pursue that, which was you know was cool for a little while and yeah. focused on my kid. Yeah, very cool. So then, tell me about the story of how you got how it led to you know the. Kingpin worldwide and you know funk yeah for sure back into it yeah so just when um, you thought you were out they, they pull you back exactly in. they pulled me back in well what was funny it's, it's one of those things you know when I kind of reflect on it how it happened because my center was vintage we we had 8230 machines there and uh, and and so that required you know I was I was I was trying to find source parts you know mm-hmm. to keep those things where they needed to be and so I became sort of a you know, that was a part of the job. I didn't dial in when I, when I started out, but through that, I, I got to know a lot of people. I made, I just met a lot of people in, in the industry. Bowling's great that way. You know, we, yeah. someone said to me one time, you know, we all kind of fish in the same pond sort of, you know, and that's true. I, I not to say that I know everyone in the industry, but I probably sure. know everyone who knows someone else that I know, you know, kind of. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Two um, of, of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> exactly. Exactly that. And so what had, what happened was as I was kind of out for a few years, but always still kind of dabbling, like if I, if I hear about a cool opportunity coming up, you know, I couldn't help but kind of, you know, check it out, things like that. But mm-hmm. what started to happen is some of my friends in the industry who I had purchased parts from and, and things over the years, a couple of them either needed help or in, in one case they were, they wanted to retire. And I remember one day getting a phone call and and kind of just saying, hey, listen, you were always really good at this. You could always find these parts and these things that people needed. And, you know, I, I'm I'm going in, I'm, I want to play more golf. <laughs> yeah. Could you help yeah. me with a couple of these projects? And so it was really organic the way it happened. Um, mm-hmm. But I started to help other operators source those parts. That was, I think. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it sort of carried on from there. I think that was, I mean, if anything I took out of my my experience in bowling and it's something that carries over to this day whether it's talking to folks with with funk or or with kingpins i want to share that i've heard other people mention it you know mike mentioned it in the podcast you did with him you know like taking what right. you've learned some of your mistakes you know, maybe i can save you some time and some money right. and some of the things that i learned that's and did so mm-hmm. yeah exactly so that's what kind of led me to it and I, I started to sell you know help people source used equipment and and getting to know more people as far as kingpins worldwide the funny story there was, you know, after I had moved away and was not in the day-to-day operations, I was still helping with my old center, but I was not in the yeah. day-to-day operations anymore. I came across the Profit platform, which was invented by the great Gordon Murray, who I had known for a long time. And, and I remember seeing that. I was still getting BCM magazines. I guess I wasn't all the way out, you know, but <laughs> I, I saw the ad and I was like, wow, that's, that's a pretty good idea. Right. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I could have used that, you know, and, uh, and I, I remember, you know, giving them a call one day and, and talking about it. And, and, you know, at that time, he even sort of mentioned, hey, would you like to sort of be a part of this? But I didn't have the availability. And, sure. but the years go on and, and, and keeping in touch with him, you know, one day in a conversation during COVID, he's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, 
I want to retire as well. Are you interested in, in, in looking at this? And I, I just knew that it was a, a product that could, could help. Maybe, maybe every single center out there, but certainly yeah. a lot of centers could be helped by it. So yeah, right. I, and, and the name is a nod to my old center. And, you know, it's a, it's, it's a revamp of the old logo. It's just kind of, that's what it is. And there's some other products that we have in the pipeline that are in the same vein, you know, it's maybe out of the box thinking, but, you know, ancillary products that could, could, could help operators save money, you know, and, and, right. and make more money. So yeah, that's, that's where that landed. Awesome. Um, again, with Funk, the opportunity to do the same way, um, mm -hmm. just from doing what I was doing, I got noticed and yeah, the opportunity arose and I took it. Yeah. Very cool. So the people who aren't familiar with Kingpins Worldwide, describe what the product is, kind of how it fits in, and maybe some of the ways you're seeing successful centers use it. Yeah, for sure. So the the product is the is a profit platform, and it's a it's a patented modular flooring system that is used to safely cover over bowling lanes and make mm -hmm. them occupiable space. So right. you know, like with, with my center, I'll just share this real 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 fast. So we were super popular, but of course, you know, like a lot of centers, Friday and Saturday nights, line out the door, everything's banging, it's awesome. Mondays, you know, talk to me yeah. <laughs> and, and and things like that. And I remember one morning, a Monday morning going in to sort of do the deposit and the liquor order. It was in Georgia. So it was hot. It was August. Air conditioning's cranking. It's 7.30 in the morning. Place is closed. And I looked around. I'm like, I have all this space. And I was like, you know, I have the same, you know, fixed cost of ownership with this business at Monday morning at 7 a.m. that I do Saturday night at 9. Right. You know? Yeah. And how can I, but I just didn't connect the dots in my head, but like, how can I use this more, you know? And, and uh, that's why I was drawn to, to it when I saw it, even after the fact, the product itself is it's, uh, it's, it's very simple. I mean, I have some here, but I, I won't you know, pull up the demo or anything, but I, it's you, you lay down, they're, they're, they're light, they're LDPE recycled basic made in America. They're they're very well engineered. The origin of it, actually, Gordon was approached by some BPAA members to hmm. and they asked because of his sort of ingenuity and in inventing different yeah. types of products, asked him to come up with something for this. But you can set it down. You can make it as big or as small as you'd like and turn those lanes into, again, into occupiable space. So for those, either the off days or like you said, you know, having a band in the middle of the lanes is something that's not something you see every day. You know what I mean? And, right. and with any age okay. of social media and stuff, it's... Yeah. It's a, it's a good look, you know, right. but what's been crazy is uh, I've, I've heard not only some people who are using it now, but people have used it in the past. So some, you know, when, when you have a bowling alley, you know, everybody knows where the bowling alley is in their town. And, and a lot of them, and it, it becomes sort of a de facto kind of community sort of hub, you know, people kind right. of gather there, whether they're yeah. bowling or not, you know, maybe they're going to put on a fundraiser there, a, a dog adoption, whatever it might be. So it, it gravitates that sort of, that sort of vibe for people. And so yeah. we've seen some people use the product to open up opportunities for other businesses in their downtime. You know, I know a place that did, uh, there's a couple chefs that really want to launch their restaurant, want to get a food truck or a restaurant, whatever it is, trying to get to that place um, mm -hmm. and raise some money doing a pop-up restaurant. You know, sometimes bowling, mm -hmm. not all the bowling alleys, but certainly old school. And in another time, there was a place where the bowling alley maybe wasn't the big draw for the for the good food, you know? Yeah. Bringing in these chefs, setting up a platform on the lanes, putting up some tables and sort of a dining experience and really getting the word out there for the center and for the people. So people have used it for yoga classes, Pilates classes, mm, getting people to kind of idea. launch those yeah. types of businesses. Right. I know of a center that was able to help out a, a, a displaced church that had had a fire. And <laughs> as they were rebuilding, they needed a bigger space, you know, on a right. Sunday morning available to them. And there just wasn't that much available in their area. And they were able to cover over the lanes and, and turn the bowling alley into something that to help those people. Mm. I, th I think my favorite one and it's it's before I was involved, but the way and I you know I don't I don't have any pictures of it. I, I I think it went through, but basically the gist was this: during the bike rally in South Dakota in Sturgis, there's you know such a such a large amount of people coming to town with their bikes, right. and you know there was people looking for sheltered parking in yeah. indoor parking, and a center there wasn't getting any business during the rally, and the, the idea was to cover over the lanes and charge. $30 a day to park your motorcycle. Right. You know, so it's very conducive to, to that. And, and I, I think, you know, maybe it's something we'll touch on going forward, but you know, the, the, a lot of the trends that I'm seeing is, is what's really great in bowling right now is the fact that it's expanding into so many non-traditional bowling spaces. Sure. Breweries, wineries, hotels, all those types of things. And, and, right. and if you have like a, 
a food and beverage centric place. I know some of the, some of the, some everyone gets kind of gun shy and taking that opportunity. Well, I'm going to be giving up this amount of square footage for this bowling idea. Yeah. It's got to what happens on the night that, you know, I have a private party or I need, need the space for something that's not going to be used for bowling. Like I, I'm sort of, I'm all in. This gives them those types of operators an opportunity. Yeah. You can have it back. Yeah. Have it back. Right. So very cool. What, what does the installation look like? Like how fast is it to put it down or take it up? Yeah, it's, it's pretty quick. Our, our, our website has a, a time-lapse video, which is, which is pretty funny to watch it. They knock it out, but it's, it's very simple. It's, the parts themselves are very light. The largest piece that goes across the width of the lane weighs about 12 pounds. And then the smaller piece that connects them, the stringer piece, it's a SL 200 piece that only weighs about three pounds. So it's kind of yeah. like Lincoln logs or maybe Legos. You know, if you yeah. Lincoln logs, you set up and push it out onto the lane and the, the other piece to it on your first install, you're going to cut down some two by fours to, to, to go in, in the bays of the actual pieces that go out under your lane. Mm -hmm. And then some two by fours that cover over the capping. That way you can lay down plywood and have a flat surface out across your lanes. So that's what it does. Mm -hmm. So the first time you do it, you know, it, it takes a little bit longer depending on the size, but that's where we, our install guide has it set up to tell us exactly how to market and set it up so that the next time it's ready to go. You're not reinventing the wheel. So right. it's, it's a pretty quick install. And then going forward, it becomes just faster and faster every time because it's pretty much yeah. set up and go. So once it's established, how long would it say, how long would it take to do one lane? I guess, break it down to a unit. Yeah. I mean, I guess so a typical install or a typical platform we, we usually see is something like four lanes wide by maybe 20 feet deep, something like that. And, and that kind of gives you just everything you need for a band or whatever you might be doing in that particular for so the, the first time you set it up push it out cut your two by fours down and that first setup is probably going to take you about three hours to get okay. everything cut, set up and ready to go and then but after that the next time you do it, it's going to take you it's, and that might the first time it might take you three people someone who knows you know someone who can, can cut the wood the right way and everything like yeah that carpenter or someone with the experience there but then the next time you do it it's probably going to take one or two people and it might take them about an hour to set up before oh wow yeah so a lot quicker yeah a lot, a lot faster and you know yeah. there's no this product is you know like unlike you know this phone here you know and i'll have another one probably next year you know there's but there's no planned obsolescence there's no updates or yeah. upgrades right you know i would say as far as capital equipment goes for a bowling center it probably has the best return on investment that of anything out there because you pay for it once and you have your events and then you never really have to, that's it, you know? Yeah. You can just, reclaim just, that space back. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes yeah. money for you, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to think, I mean, I'm sure there's tons of ideas out there, but there, you know, it's probably as far as your imagination on what you can do out with that. Yeah. I mean, there's a center that actually, it was a, built as a 12 lane center, new ownership took it over. They wanted to downsize the lanes and use some other lanes for some other things. I think, I think golf simulators, I believe, and some other things they have mm. going on. And so they actually, it's more or less permanent for them. Mm. They have four lanes covered over, but the idea being that should the time arise or, or should, you know, they don't want to, maybe they're going to sell it in a few years and it has more value as a 12 lane center than an eight lane center. Yeah. They, they want that land and they were, they want that real estate to, to make more money from it. So Rather than ripping out the lanes, they leave it there. And, yeah. and you know, who knows? Maybe a, a private party comes along that wants the whole place. You never know. So it can be used on a semi-permanent basis as well. Mm -hmm. And it's designed to to nest together the way the way you keep it. You can put the wood pieces inside of it. And it's designed to sort of not take up a lot of space when you're when, it, when you're not using it. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, just a bunch of ideas going through on what you could do with that, but it really send them really my cool. way. <laughs> you got to keep a Hall of Fame log of here's all the things you can. Yeah, do. yeah, that's actually something that we're we're reaching out to customers who who've had it for a while for some of their some mm -hmm. of their uses and things that they've they've done. We've heard some pretty cool ones, you know. I think it's been it's been it's 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 hosted a lot of really cool events to say that you know. Yeah, a lot of cool bands and things like that have played on the profit platform all over the place. So it's very yeah, cool. that would be my first thought as a band or some kind of event where you want that space back yeah yeah and then like again you know being able to do that and and still have people bowling around you you know and things like that it just creates a, a an, an all new environment yeah, yeah. right very different yeah mm -hmm. so and it's been good for fundraising you know the the bvl it's, it's been involved in several of those events which we're always you know yeah super happy to to i mean it's an honor right yeah you know, frank what they're doing I think it was Frank out at Rabs was telling me he did the same thing and they 
raised like 20 grand in a couple yeah. hours for BVL and they yep. just had a band out on the platform. Yep. Yeah. He, he got it from us and did it. And he, what well, mm -hmm. he's a great guy. And yeah. A great Super event. Cool. And uh, yeah, like I say, like that, you talk about, you know, giving back just to have the opportunity to be a part of what those, the, that, that group's doing and what they're doing for, for vets is, you know, that's really cool. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. So moving on, I guess for the other piece is, you know, some of the stuff you're doing with Funk today. I know Alex was on the podcast, you know, one of the earlier episodes, Yeah. but a lot's changed since then. And I know a lot of it has to do with what you mentioned about the expanding market into yeah. some new places. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that, what you're seeing today. Yeah. That, I mean, that's been an incredible journey. You know, Funk is a, it's a family company. It's, you know, so much history there, you know, the being there pretty much on day one of the string pin set or Carl Funk, part of a team, yeah. bring that to life. Right. And, uh, you know, now to have a hundred thousand of their machines in play in over 40 countries around the world, it's, huh. it's, it's amazing. But seeing its growth in, in America has been, you know, again, talk about, uh, opportunity that's been great, you know, to, to see what's happening there. What in, in my, my role there, I mean, pretty much every, every day um, I'm talking to people from all walks of the industry. So it could be people who, have, you know, maybe have four centers and have all kinds of endeavor going on and they see the opportunity to, to change over to the, the funk. Mm -hmm. spring pin setter because of for all the reasons right not having the, the mechanic and the parts and, and, the, and the power bills being so much lower to people that are kind of like where i was in 2004 2005 you know i, I want to do this i want to pursue this opportunity and so the growth has been been amazing and it's you know kind of kind of like with the form you know you know you're bringing something to operators that can really really make a massive difference in their operations day yeah. to day you know so yeah and and again too it's so much of it is happening outside of the traditional bowling alley right and 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 that's good for everybody you know to see the expansion of the game and seeing it more more regularly in 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 places like wineries like breweries and hotels right. and 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 food and beverage places and and, and wedding reception halls and yeah and so many of those things because it's it's universal everybody likes it and when you when you take away sort of those obstacles that existed, you know, even when I did my place, you know, you, you had to have a hundred feet and certainly we do the full size mm -hmm. lanes, you know, but if sure. someone wants to do our duck pin product, you know, you don't need all that footprint. Right. So that's good for everybody, you know, for the, for the whole industry, I believe. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, it's, it's a resurgence really. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. Big time. And, 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 you know, we all, we all want that. We all, we all, everyone gains from that, you know? So right. yeah. I mean, you get exposed to it one spot and you know, you're going to want to go and do it again somewhere else. For sure. You know, it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's, I'd say it's enlarging the pie rather than taking some of it. Exactly. You know? Right. You know, and it's, it's a great time. Like for, for someone to enter the industry or upgrade their center, I mean, 2023, like this era that we're in, you know, so much is, has has been learned, not only in operations, but, you know, yeah, now to have systems that can save you, you know, the, the variable costs always were, certainly with my center, man, <laughs> like there was a lot of, yeah. you know, it, it, there was so much, it created a career for me, right? Un, unbeknownst to me at the time, but, you know, yeah. there to, to uh, sort of alleviate those variable costs on your PL, see them go away. You know, I mean, it's just, it's a good time to enter the industry, to upgrade your place. Mm -hmm. And you talk about all the other things that are out there in the, in, in the market now, you know, like the lighting systems that are available and yeah. you know, there's no more fiberglass bucket seats to sit in, you know, right. <laughs> yeah. You know? And it's really, it's come, you know, full circle kind of back to the social bowler, you know, the people out to have a good time. And, yeah. You know, we all need coming out of, what's been going on in the world in the last few years and yeah, everyone with their face in a phone, you know, it's, it's, you're seeing a big uptick in bowling across the board for everybody. And I think that's for those reasons, you're actually yeah. out. You Absolutely. Know, people. Yeah. I mean, it, people will have that innate desire to be out with their friends. You know, they want to uh, have something to do. They want to get together with friends, do something active a little bit. And bowling is one of those things that you can do at pretty much any age. So it's, it's really uh, getting a tailwind. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's, it's great to be a part of that. And Funk's certainly doing their part. You know, we're, we're, all, we're all doing our part. Right. So yeah. Awesome. And so I want to be respectful of your time. We're coming up to the top of the uh, the hour, but I want to expand on that or keep going with that a little bit and talk maybe about where you see things going Yeah. for the next maybe year, 18 months, both with the flooring and with the, you know, string machines. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, kind of 
along the lines of what I was saying, I think we're going to see even more and more expansion, you know, into not only new centers, because I talk to people all the time who want to do traditional large centers. So I think you're going to start to see those kind of come back. I mean, they never went away, right? But there was certainly a time, there was a lot of, you know, the old school mom and pop centers that were, um, you know, kind of like a Walgreens waiting to happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then, so they went that way for the value of their real estate or whatever. Sure. And and those don't, they, for a long time, those weren't just getting replaced. You know, even what I did, I did an eight lane boutique center because, you know, that's just what it, it made sense. Right. But I think what we're going to start to see again is the, is, is, is the, this is the return of the bigger centers, mm -hmm. you know, in the right markets. The other thing I think we're going to see, and, I, and I've had some conversations and I, I can't go like into the details of them because people are working on some pretty cool things, but um, there's a lot of new blood coming in mm. to bowling. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of new thinking. A lot, a lot of, of people. Uh, when you say new blood, you mean people from outside or like next generation? Next or? generation. Okay. Yeah. Next generation and, and, and outside the industry for sure. Mm -hmm. But like one of the things that, that, that Funk is, is I, I, I believe that one of the special things that we bring to the table is we're positioned in such a way, our experience and then the ingenuity that we have on our team and everyone else that, you know, that I work with, we're certainly not a... Well, this is the way it's always been done. So this yeah. is how we do it kind of company. That's not us. Right. And so because of that, we have people come to us with these really out of the box ideas. And I, I wish I could sit here and unpack this one project that I've been working with, but it's everything about it is thrown out the rule book yet mm. super cool. And it's still, it's, it's bowling like you always like it, but it's mm. from, they thought of kind of everything. Mm. Um, so when the day comes and I can pull the curtain back on that, I'll give you a ring, but suffice it to say that there's energy out there like that, which is also so cool and so good to see. So I, I think the bigger centers, I think out, out, outside the box thinking on, on some of the new projects that are coming yeah. out there and new availability and, and, you know, something that we've been involved in recently which I think is going to be, is going to, you're going to see more and more of a, we, we just completed work on a bowling trailer. Oh, yeah. There's a, yeah. There's a couple of these in existence. And, you know, at first glance, you know, again, that's one of those, that's not, how, that, that's not how we do things. You know, that's not us, right. you know? And so there's a huge industry out there, you know, with the mobile gaming, you know, people can, mm. they'll bring a trailer, like a kid's party and it's full. Yeah. Of, or, yeah you know, or a wedding venue. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anything. And, uh, you know, there's kind of mobile anything now and, and bowling is, is, is taking its, its place there. And that's a pretty cool, that's a pretty cool opportunity, mm -hmm. especially when you, you know, not only just driving it to the kid's house for a party, but, you know, combining that with things like food trucks and, and the sort of the mobile bar scene, you know, you could almost have a pop-up, you know, a nightclub type of thing, right. you know, yeah. in your town. You you know? right. and, and again, I, I love that kind of stuff. It's it's it gives you a jolt of energy, you know, to see the fresh thinking and the new ideas and the and the people putting it on the line to make it happen. It's right. Really cool. And it's cool to plug into that and be a part of that energy. So yeah. I think there's a lot to be excited about going forward in the future. As far as Kingpins and the profit platform goes, you know, our our whole goal, you, you know, we're not gonna be a household name or, or anything like that. But you know, speaking for myself, I can say I've I've been there. I, I saw a lot of success in bowling and and then you know i also had all the challenges that any operator would have and so sure. what we're gonna our role is gonna be is is to help those operators out there through the platform and through some of the other ideas that we have like i say in the pipeline to help continue it forward in terms of new ways to save money and make money and, yeah and, you know and funk really dovetails into that very well actually right. but um, that's where we're going to be. That's going to be our little corner of the world. And, uh, and whether it's just, uh, you know, providing people with, with, with products and ideas and help move them forward or, or, you know, just advice and insights from you know, where we've seen, where we've been or plugging other people into resources that we have that can help them. That's, that's where we're at. So the future for us is, is, you know, to keep helping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think you'll be well received with, with those two uh, objectives to save money and, and to make money. You know, with with open arms, you'll be received. That's well. That's cool. We're here. <laughs> cool. Well, like I said, I know we're we're coming up against time. So if someone is interested in either you know the uh, profit platform or in you know the string machines from Funk, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah, for sure. Funkbowling.com is our is our website, um, mm -hmm. and you'll you'll find everything there. My email address directly there is Edward at Funkbowling.com, mm -hmm. and then with the platform, it's KingpinsWorldwide.com.
So okay. it's Kingpins with an S worldwide and that Kingpins worldwide. So okay. That's how you Easy find enough. me. Yeah, I tried. Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks so much, Ed. This has been a blast. Same here, love, man. You know, talking about this stuff, seeing what's happening out there, what people are doing. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to get together and do it again. And yeah, I'm sure I'll be seeing you out there on the road. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You'll have to come back and tell us about it. That'd be great, man. That'd be great. Thanks. Thanks very much for us. Appreciate it. You bet, Ed. It's been a pleasure. Have a good one. Right. Take care.